Good evening and welcome. My name is Jennifer Summit. In my capacity as Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming you to San Francisco State University's Honors Convocation. Those of you in academic regalia may remove your caps if you choose. As we begin tonight's celebration, I want to take a moment to thank our San Francisco State University student musicians for that beautiful performance. Thank you. Please be seated. Welcome to our 2017 All University Undergraduate Honors Convocation. Tonight we celebrate the scholarly success and special achievements of over 100 talented, determined, and accomplished San Francisco State students. Our President Leslie Wong could not be with us tonight, but he shares the joy and the pride that we all take in honoring these students. They have met the highest standards during their times here, during their years here, rising to the challenges given them by our exceptional faculty. They have enriched our lives, for education is a distinctly two-way process, as we trust that we have theirs. We want to recognize our honors students and, achieve, and their achievements, and so we gather at the end of the academic year to applaud their exemplary work and wish them well for the next step. We trust that they are leaving with an education that has prepared them to inquire freely, to think and analyze independently, and as they've often heard President Wong say, to own their own mind. And we trust that they are leaving with that distinct feature of a San Francisco State University education that we cherish dearly, the ability to apply their knowledge in ways that will better the world around them. Representatives of our university community are here to join with us in this convocation. You will meet many of them as the evening proceeds, but I want to start by introducing some of them now. Will the following individuals please stand as I introduce you? And please hold your applause until the end. Lolo Hong, Vice President for Student Affairs. <laughs> Lori Beth Wei, Interim Dean of Undergraduate Education and Academic Planning. Deborah Masters, University Librarian. Lily G. Pre President of the University Women's Board Association, whose members are this evening's official convocation greeters and the hosts of our reception as at the Student Center later this evening. Our two stage marshals, Jeff Cookston, Professor of Psychology, and William Christmas, Professor of English Language and Literature. I also want to acknowledge our two faculty marshals, Dorothy Ceruta, Professor of Africana Studies, and Connie Ulasowicz, Professor of Apparel Design and Merchandising. We teach some of the most talented students in the world. When they first arrive on campus, we introduce them to one of the world's finest teaching faculties who have come to San Francisco State out of a desire to make a difference in the lives of students while also shaping knowledge in their disciplines. That intersection between student and faculty is a recipe for outstanding academic innovation and achievement. To acknowledge that relationship, each year we ask a chief representative of the faculty, the chair of the Academic Senate, to address our honorees and our guests. Dr. Troy Carlton joined San Francisco State as a faculty member in 1996 and is a professor of linguistics in the English department. She's led the faculty of San Francisco State this past year as chair of the Academic Senate. For two decades, Dr. Carlton has served San Francisco State as a highly respected teacher and accomplished scholar. 
In addition to her work as a faculty member, she has been committed to the preservation and documentation of endangered languages around the world. Dr. Carlton's academic career has been centered on the notion that community members are stakeholders in the documentation and preservation of their linguistic traditions. In the mountains of Oaxaca, Mexico, her work has concentrated on creating and building an archive of the community's oral history in Zapotec for their mu municipal museum and international digital archives. Students join her to work on the archive for three weeks each summer. Dr. Carlton is a first-rate teacher, scholar, and soon-to-be administrator as she prepares to move into a new role as associate dean in the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. In all of these roles, she lends her talents to making the community around her a better place. In short, she is a great citizen of this university. I'm now pleased to present Dr. Troy Carlton, and her, her talk tonight is called What Comes Next, Engaging Your Inner Core. I had to print it off again with bigger print. So, First of all, I'd like to start by congratulating all of you. It's such an honor to be here to celebrate all of the hard work, perseverance, and impressive accomplishments represented by our new graduates at San Francisco State University. Graduates, you are here with your family and friends because you've not only reached a level of achievement that in this institution merits special recognition, you have also demonstrated a high potential for great achievement in the future. Your achievements here and in the future, however, go beyond your quantifiable GPAs you've earned or any salaries that may lay ahead. Your achievements will be tied to your character and your vision of what a humane and just world looks like. It will tap into your intrinsic qualities as human beings and as citizens of our global and local communities. It will fully engage the very core of who you are. Now to be sure, we're certainly here to celebrate you tonight. That said, before getting too far into this, I think it is a perfect opportunity to celebrate and acknowledge all of the friends and family and teachers and mentors who have provided you with the support and encouragement that has brought you to this very moment. Most of us would not be where we are today in life if at least one person had not believed in us enough to give us a chance. So let's take this opportunity and now pay tribute to all of those in this room who have believed in you with a hearty warm applause. So, in the lyrical words of King George III as portrayed in the musical Hamilton, what comes next? This is probably a question you've been asking yourself since at least you turned in your gap forms. And it is certainly a question that all of these lovely people we've just applauded will be asking you in about an hour and a half. Don't panic, don't panic, seriously. This is probably not the first time and it certainly won't be the last time that you will find yourself at a crossroad in life contemplating what comes next. A wise colleague who happens to be sitting on this stage tonight said to me, um, as I was taking on the role of an academic senate chair two years ago, Quote, there is always the temptation to think you can or should do it all. You can't and you shouldn't. Decide on what's important to you, a couple of things that you know you can make a difference with, and then make it happen. The question, of course, is how do you narrow down all the things that need to be done into a doable list of things that can be done? Now, to be sure, the pressure is on you and your generation to do heroic things. This is no joke. You really and truly are the future and we really and truly are counting on you. Certainly never in my lifetime have I experienced such a sense of urgency, such a sense of uncertainty, and such a sense of widespread anxiety. That said, I don't want you to get the impression that this is all on you. With challenges such as the ones we face today, it is incumbent upon all of us to engage our core and act from our hearts, the locus in which our fundamental values reside. Fundamental or core values are more than just simply a list of things that are, we place importance on. Core values are those guiding principles that dictate our behavior and our actions. Core values help us know what is right from wrong. 
core values clarify who we are and articulate what we stand for. In other words, core values hold us accountable. When we consider the work of those we admire most in the world and in history, it's not hard to piece together what core values were the driving force behind their accomplishments. I think Cesar Chavez summed it up perfectly when he said, what I do shows people what kind of person I am. I am constantly inspired by my colleagues at San Francisco State and their commitment to the mission of this institution. But by the same token, and equally so, and I think I can speak for everyone up on this stage as well as our faculty in the audience, we are inspired by all of you. You are the reason we get up in the morning and come to work, seriously, because there's a lot of traffic, and we come, <laughs> all right? Many of you came to San Francisco State because of its strong commitment to social justice and equity. Many of you, like all of us sitting up here, share with us the core values of courage and resilience, intellectual and creative curiosity, and community. And it's for these reasons and many, many more that we believe in you so profoundly. But don't see the confidence we have in you or the daunting challenges that lay ahead as a burden. Try to view them as opportunities. I won't stand here and lie to you. We tell every graduating class that we believe in them and that they are the future, okay? Which is true, and we always mean it. But as I said earlier, this time we really, really mean it. <laughs> you are the bright light, and you have the power to change and transform this world into a better place. And we are confident you will bring us along with you as you reach the highest peaks. So I say to you tonight, dig deep, engage your inner core. The more you engage those values, the stronger your core will be. The stronger your core, the better the world. Find that one thing that means something to you and that you can make a difference with because what you do matters. It really, really does. All great actions originate in our hearts and are a reflection of our core. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits become your values, and your values become your destiny. Or as Yoda put it in The Empire Strikes Back, do or do not, there is no try. So what comes next? You do. And we're all very excited to see how it unfolds. So congratulations. I will now return the podium to our Provo Summit. Thank you, Senate Chair Carlton, for your heartfelt remarks and for reminding our graduates and all of us how we can shape the world into a more humane and just place through our characters. We're confident that the knowledge and experience that we've shared with our students will guide them to lead rich lives with principles and values at their core. Tonight, we are recognizing students for their outstanding achievements at San Francisco State University. First, we'll honor those students who were inducted as members of Phi Beta Kappa in a prior ceremony. Following, we will honor 117 undergraduate students who are graduating in the top 1.5% of the students from their academic colleges. Most of them will graduate with magna cum laude or summa cum laude. Finally, we will honor 57 undergraduates who have been selected by their academic departments and programs to receive special recognition for ex excellence in their particular field. This final group includes six students who have been singled out to represent all of the graduating seniors in their respective colleges. Each of the six colleges invi is invited to select one outstanding student to represent all the others in their area in the Honors Convocation here tonight and also at, at commencement. They are selected because of their outstanding academic achievements and their other significant accomplishments that you'll hear about this evening. These six students seated here in the front row will receive the symbolic investiture of the hood at our commencement ceremonies tomorrow. This year marks the 41st anniversary of the first installation of our Phi Beta Kappa chapter members at San Francisco State University. 
The president of the university chapter is Dr. Masahiko Minami, who is in the audience tonight. Dr. Minami, would you please stand? Ours is a university that stresses the liberal arts as the basis for all instruction. Phi Beta Kappa, the oldest honorary society in the United States, recognizes students who have successfully demonstrated breadth and depth of study in the sciences, the humanities, and the behavioral and social sciences. The National Society of Phi Beta Kappa established the Omicron of California at San Francisco State University 41 years ago in 1976. Since then, only 934 San Francisco State University students have met the requirements to be elected to Phi Beta Kappa out of a pool of more than 187,800 graduating students. As you can expect, the selection process is rigorous. I'm proud to introduce the Phi Beta Kappa members who are able to join us tonight and who have been initiated into the Omicron California chapter. I ask that each student please stand and I, as I call your name and remain standing until all members are named. They are Devin Maureen Mitchell, Dominic Joseph Rubino, and Palak Sukato. Please join me in congratulating these students for their outstanding academic achievements. You may be seated. I would now like to introduce the Dean of the College of Business, Linda Ubre, who will present the faculty, representatives, and students according high academic honors from the College of Business. Thank you, Provost Summit, and good evening to everyone. I would like to introduce the chairs and faculty members representing the academic departments in the College of Business and ask them to remain standing until all faculty members have been introduced. They are Teresa Hammond, Accounting. Susan Chalette, Decision Sciences. Michael Potapan, Economics. Zi Han, Finance. Andrew Walls, Hospitality and Tourism Management. Samir Verma, Information Systems. Roblin Simeon, International Business. Jason Harris Bounty, Management. And Judy Strabel, Chair of Marketing. Please join me in, in applause for these faculty. You may be seated. As I introduce the honor students from the College of Business, I would ask that each student please stand and remain standing until all of the students from the category have been presented. Please hold your applause until all students have been called. These are the students graduating in the top 1.5% for the College of Business, along with our special major. In accounting, Sydney Chan, Candice Luing, Anita Chong Lao, Wanzi Li, Frida Zekev, Yushin Zong. In economics, Palak Zucato. In finance, Nadia Lukito. Andre Pateru. In general business, Kelly Ann Calva. Lena Zatri. In hospitality and tourism management, Su Ching Li. In information systems, Valerie Badua. William Stokel. In international business, Nikki Shikon Wang, in management, Amanda Lapone, and Sudhar Seaman. In marketing, Emily Elizabeth Holtz, Rachel Medina, Leanne Ramon Ortega, Cynthia Tu. In special major, sociocognitive marketing for pro social business, Christopher Daco. Please join me in congratulating our honorees. You may now be seated. I would now like to present 
those students who have been selected by their departments for special recognition. Agarov Batold, Accounting. Sharon Ju, Decision Sciences. Palak Zucato, Economics. Tree Wen, Finance. Xu Ching Li, Hospitality and Tourism Management. Valerie Badua, Information Systems. Nikki Shikoyo Wong, International Business. And Emily Elizabeth Holtz, Marketing. Congratulations. You may now be seated. As Provost Summit mentioned, each of the colleges selects one student to receive the hood tonight on behalf of all of its graduates. I'm very pleased to introduce this year's hood recipient from the College of Business, Valerie Badua. Valerie, graduating with a BS in Information Systems, has overcome a number of obstacles, one of them being distance. Throughout her two years at San Francisco State, she commuted from Murrieta in Southern California, where she lives with her husband. During the week, she would stay in San Francisco with family. She made the sacrifice and transfer from Irvine Valley College because, at the time, SF State was one of the few schools with a focus on information systems. She's also the first in her family to earn a bachelor's degree. But perhaps the biggest challenge for Badua has been becoming a new mom. She gave birth to her son Gabriel in January and says it's been hard to balance her pregnancy and motherhood with school. It's been a long journey because my husband and I found out I was, ex I was expecting when I was still in school, she said. She found out she was having a baby last spring and enrolled in four classes over the summer so she could finish faster. When I finally had my baby, it was a big adjustment, she said. <laughs> but challenge is not something Badua shies away from. In fact, it defines many years of her life. At 10, she and her family immigrated to the United States from Russia and moved to Sacramento. It was a big adjustment trying to learn a new language and adjust to a new culture, she said. At 18, she enlisted in the Marines because she was compelled by its core values, honor, courage, and commitment, and the emphasis on teamwork. In 2005, she deployed in Iraq for 11 months. It opened up my eyes to people and how we generally want the same things. We want safety, we want family, we want the chance to pursue happiness. After sustaining an injury during a training exercise, she was medically discharged from the Marines. Despite her injury, she was grateful for the experiences she gained, which included meeting her husband, a fellow Marine. She credits her success to her supportive husband and professors who accommodated her through her pregnancy and motherhood. Badua said she hopes to get a master's degree and pursue a career in the tech industry, working with information systems. But right now, her focus is her baby. It's a challenge being a new parent, but it's very rewarding. Congratulations, Valerie, on all you have achieved, both academically and personally. We wish you much success in your future goals and dreams. It is now my pleasure to introduce Interim Dean Nancy Robinson, who will present the faculty representatives and the students from the Graduate School of Education. Good evening. The Graduate College of Education is the only college at San Francisco State University that is primarily a graduate school. We prepare students who already have their baccalaureate degrees to be professional educators and service providers. The Graduate College of Education offers only one undergraduate degree, the Bachelor of Arts in Communicative Disorders, within the Department of Special Education and Communicative Disorders. Representing the faculty from the college, the Graduate College of Education's undergraduate program tonight is Dr. Laura Epstein. The following students in the Department of Educa Special Education and Communicative Disorders, majoring in Communicative Disorders, are among those who are graduating with high academic honors. Pia Echegoen, 
Jensen David. Congratulations. Now I'd like to present the student who was selected as our department honoree, Monica Zakarevich in special education and communicative disorders. I am proud to present Pia Echegoen, the undergraduate Hood recipient for the Graduate College of Education. I'll tell you a little bit about her. Pia Echegoen grew up in Argentina and came to San Francisco State University after several years of travel and work in Europe, Asia, and Australia, where she met her husband. When the couple moved to the Bay Area after he received a job offer here, she quickly made attending SF State her goal. I love the campus. Even when I was at community college, I would drive by and go for walks around here, she said. It was very different from what I was used to. In Argentina, we don't have these kinds of campuses. Lots of green and people everywhere. Echegoen is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Communicative Disorders. At first, though, she found her classes difficult and was worried that her English wasn't good enough. She says, there were lots of questions. I, it would take a really long time to grasp things. I always had a dictionary with me, she said. But now my dictionary has graduated. I don't need it as much anymore. This was a huge accomplishment for me. Eventually, Echegoen began tutoring other students. She's been a lab manager for the Gray, Ma the Gray Matter Laboratory at SF State under the mentorship of Dr. Teresa Gray, where she contributed to research projects working with adults with aphasia. Additionally, she volunteers at a speech and language clinic in the Mission District. Echegoen is due to give birth to a baby boy this summer and she hopes to pursue her graduate degree in speech and language pathology very soon and plans to become a speech language pathologist to help those who struggle to find their voice. She credits the open cultural mindset and the friendly students and professors at SF State for giving her the encouragement to pursue her studies. She says, I'm not embarrassed here to speak another language or have an accent or make a mistake. At first, I wouldn't talk to people because I had a thick accent. But people here wouldn't mind at all. I'm very interested in bilingualism, and I'm able to work with people here on that. Pia, we honor you tonight for not allowing language to hinder your academics. We wish you much success in all of your future studies and helping others find their voice. Felicitaciones. Now I'm pleased to introduce my colleague, Kenneth Montiero, Dean of the College of Ethnic Studies, who will now present the faculty representatives and honor students from the College of Ethnic Studies. Thank you, Dean Robinson. The faculty from the College of Ethnic Studies in attendance tonight are Professor Dorothy Ceruta, Africana Studies, <laughs> Professor Grace Yu, Asian American Studies, and Professor Belinda Reyes, Latina Latino Studies. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the high academic honor student for the College of Ethnic Studies is Erica Jasmine how Reggie, I may have not done that well. I've got the last name right, How Reggie. 
and I'm not sure if she's been able to attend this evening. The following students are our department honorees, Ebony Nicole Maxwell, Africana Studies, Shannon Deloso, Asian American Studies. Thank you. You may now be seated. And it's now my honor to introduce this year's Hood recipient for the College of Ethnic Studies. Shannon Deloso, who is graduating with a bachelor's degree in Asian American Studies. For Shannon, Moving from Sacramento to San Francisco, leaving her family back at home, was daunting. But she found her way to San Francisco State, and by merging herself in ethnic studies and joining a half dozen clubs or so, she settled in. Deloso, the, the daughter of Filipino immigrants and a first-generation college student, was the president and the CEO of the, Amer uh, the Associated Students Incorporated for the 2016-2017 school year. She found her purpose teaching a high school ethnic studies class in the San Francisco Unified School District and campaigning for the ethnic studies program at San Francisco State. She says, I'm a shy person, but ethnic studies was a turning point. I started to feel this urge to advocate more, to push myself. Deloso is graduating with a degree in Asian American Studies and a double minor in Race and Resistance at, uh, Studies and also in Education. Her choice, her advice to current and future San Francisco State students, take an Ethnic Studies course. That's even more important in today's political climate, she said. People have the idea that Ethnic Studies is just for people of color, when in reality, it's a space where all of us can learn about one another. Deloso was a member of the League of Filipino Students and Kappa Psi Epsilon, which he helped develop Mula Sa Ugat, the first Filipino-American student organization coalition. She worked with Project Connect and the Pacific Islanders Club and has also served as the Associated Students College of Ethnic Studies representative for 2015-2016. She has been accepted to the University of California at Los Angeles and this fall, she will pursue a master's degree in education. She plans to continue teaching ethnic studies and would like to be a school principal someday. Working with youth is something I'm passionate about, she said. Because of my experience here, I want to provide a space where they can feel empowered to learn, learn about themselves, and to understand about self-determination and agency. Shannon, you were sent forth as one of our ambassadors for ethnic studies. We wish you success in this promising future that awaits you and also those young minds you'll empower to succeed. Congratulations. I now have the pleasure of introducing my colleague Dean Alvin Alvarez, who will present the faculty, representatives, and honor students for the College of Health and Social Sciences. Alvin. Thank you, Dean Montero. The department chairs and faculty representatives here tonight from the College of Health and Social Sciences are Linda Platas, Child and Adolescent Development, Gretchen George, Consumer and Family Studies, Dietetics, Rick Harvey, Health Education. Anthony Mayo, Kinesiology. Sherry Cesarini, School of Nursing. George Barganier, Public Affairs and Civic Engagement. Eric Rosegard, Chair, Recreation, Parks and Tourism. Susanna Jones, Director, School of Social Work. Marla Ramirez, Sociology and Sexuality Studies. Connie Olasowicz, Chair, Consumer Family Studies, and Dietetics. Thank you for joining us tonight. The following students from the College of Health and Social Sciences are among those graduating with the highest academic honors in our college. Please stand as I call your name. In Child and Adolescent Development, Monica Sonia Del Alio. 
in, in Consumer and Family Studies and Dietetics, Patrick Newton. In Criminal Justice, Jennifer Cruz Rios, Jenny Salgado, and Kyle McCoy. In Health Education, Amy Lozano. In Kinesiology, Gabrielle Brianne Roa. In Nursing, Charlotte Kanda. And Jennifer Dawn Price. And in Sociology, Erica Jasmine Haurigi. Please join me in congratulating our colleagues. Our students here tonight who are given special recognition by their individual departments, and please stand as I call your name. Monica Sonia Del Alio, Child and Adolescent Development. Patrick Newton, Dietetics. Jennifer Cruz Rios, Criminal Justice. Elsie Arias, Health Education. Dominic Joseph Rubino, Kinesiology. Tara Nicole Flessner, School of Nursing. Michael Bennett, Recreation Parks and Tourism. Nathan Padilla, School of Social Work. Erica Jasmine Haurigi, Sociology and so Sexuality Studies. Congratulations. I'm not only pleased, but very honored and moved to introduce this year's Hood recipient for the College of Health and Social Sciences, Michael Bennett. Michael, would you please stand? <laughs> Michael is receiving his bachelor's degree in recreation, parks, and tourism, and let me tell you why. Michael Bennett was a homeless veteran who dealt with drug issues and rose out of poverty to earn a bachelor's degree at the age of 62. He credits the overall mission and spirit of SF State and most specifically Project Rebound Program, which helps formerly incarcerated earn college degrees. He says, social justice means a lot to me. I'm the product of social justice. For the last 23 years, Bennett has been a community advocate in San Francisco, working with homeless and low-income adults and families, military veterans, middle school students, first-time offenders, at-risk youths, unemployed adults, and adults trying to improve their physical health and nutritional wellness. He has worked as the Director of Physical Activity and Nutrition Wellness Program at the Bayview Hunters Point YMCA, and is currently a Community Engagement Specialist at Candlestick Point State Park Recreation Area. Bennett continued working full time while taking a full load of classes. He says he felt pride driving down 19th Avenue before each class and was excited to be among younger students of color. He says, when I come on campus, I feel excited. My chest is stuck out. Stick it out a little bit. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to miss every day going to my classes, showing up on time, and sitting in close to the professors. He says his recreation, parks, and tourism classes have strengthened his commitment to work with marginalized residents, to improving health disparities with wellness opportunities, and to providing recreational opportunities to an aging population. That includes his work in Bayview Hunters Point, where people who have lived there for decades are being forced out by rising rents. I think it's a great accomplishment to graduate as a senior as a student over 60 years old from this university. And I appreciate that they found the room to, op to be open to older students on campus and to be open to listening to their experiences. Michael, we commend you on all you have had to overcome to be here in this moment and for all that you have taught us. Celebrate it because you, sir, have definitely earned it. Congratulations.
told you I was moved. I'm now pleased to introduce my colleague, Dean Andrew Harris, who will present the faculty representatives and honor students from the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. Dean Harris. Thank you, Dean Alvarez. I would like to introduce the department chairs and faculty members representing the academic departments and programs for the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. Please hold applause until I finish. Peter Richardson, American Studies. James Quesada, Anthropology. Victor De La Rosa, Art. Marie Drennan, Broadcast and Electronic Communication Arts. Celine Shimizu, Cinema. Jillian McIntosh, Classics. Christina Sabi, Communication Studies. Dane Johnson, Comparative and World Literature. Paul Hoover, Creative Writing. Marty Linder, Design. William Christmas, English Language and Literature. Laura Lisi Wagner, History. Carol Bertram, Humanities. Mahmoud Manchapuri, International Relations. Venice Wagner, Journalism. Mariana Ferreira, Liberal Studies. Ben Sabi, Music. Justin Tuald, Philosophy. James Martell, Political Science. Laura Waithe, Theater and Dance. Julie Hua, Women and Gender Studies. These are the students from the College of Liberal and Creative Arts accorded with high academic honors. In anthropology, Victor Alejandro Cortez, Benjamin Hepner Holte, Devon Maureen Mitchell. In art, Michelle Jones, Alexandria Belda Martinez, Hironori Suzuki. In broadcast and electronic communication arts, Shane White. In cinema, Coralise Marie Specht. In creative writing, Kayan Chia. Shelby Ann Urbina. In design and industry, Daisy Jesse Gerstein. In history, Gerald Morlich. Haley Joy Scandret. In international relations, Genevieve Lane. In liberal studies, Juliana Jorgensen. In philosophy, Cheyenne Coxal. In political science, Alicia Richards. In women and gender studies, Iris Janet Diaz. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding students. You may be seated. The following students have been selected by their departments and programs to receive special recognition for excellence in their respective field. Again, kindly withhold applause until I name all the students. <clears throat> Benjamin Hefner Holte, Anthropology. Alexandria Belda Martinez, Art. John Alonso Ion, Cinema. Carolyn Arches, Classics. Ariana Balagtas, Comparative and World Literature. Bradley Penner, Creative Writing. Nicole Maiman, Dance. <clears throat> Callum Lenneman, Design. Finora Dip, Humanities. Genevieve Lane, International Relations. Oscar Gutierrez, Journalism. Juliana Jorgensen, Liberal Studies. Brendan Mundi, Music. Cheyenne Coxal, Philosophy. Alicia Richards, Political Science. <clears throat> Maya Louise Smoot, Theater Arts. Daniela Montserrat Marquez, Women and Gender Studies. Congratulations to you all. You may be seated. I am honored to introduce the undergraduate hood recipient for the College of Liberal and Creative Arts, Callum Lenneman. <clears throat> Raised by a cabinet maker and ceramics teacher in rural Topanga Canyon, Callum had a number of creative tools and resources at his fingertips. Growing up, he explored various artistic outlets like sewing, drawing, and even screen printing. 
When he arrived at SF State, he knew he'd pursue a path in design or the arts. And when he took a class in industrial design, he realized this was the way to coalesce his disparate interests into one discipline. <clears throat> industrial and product design is basically problem solving, Lenneman said. And what appeals to him about that is creating solutions that serve the greater good. As a student, he created a wide range of product designs, including a splint for dogs recovering from surgery, a folding chair designed for senior citizens that maximizes comfort and facilitates movement, and a software application that helps Alzheimer's patients manage critical information. <clears throat> Lenneman's most proud of his senior project called the Attune, a coat that helps people with post-concussion syndrome safely navigate public spaces around, trans around public transit through haptic feedback. Many people who suffer from this syndrome have migraines, anxiety, and other cognitive disorders in the presence of loud noises. He said he came up with a project after meeting a girl who lost her eyesight after a concussion. <clears throat> she eventually regained her sight, but would sometimes faint if she heard a siren or a loud noise, an extreme symptom of post-concussion syndrome. <clears throat> to create this jacket, Lenneman conducted surveys, interviewed health professionals, and other patients. He also mapped sound types, volume, and meaning through subway stations in San Francisco. When worn, the garment translates different sounds, such as transit announcements, into vibrations felt over different parts of the body, so the wearer can receive and interpret transit information. After graduation, Lenneman said he hopes to land a job in a consulting firm working on product and industrial design, and specifically for a company that's designing for social impact. Quote, my definition of success is how I can maximize whatever skills or resources I have to actually contribute to society, he said. Callum, thank you for incorporating into your art the need to serve the greater good. Your desire to help our society is applauded. We wish you much success in all that the future holds for you. Congratulations. Now, to present the faculty representatives and to honor outstanding students from the College of Science and Engineering, it is my honor to yield the podium to Dean Keith Bowman. Thank you, Dean Harris. The chairs and faculty from the College of Science and Engineering here tonight are Carmen Domingo, Biology, Teaster Baird, Chemistry and Biochemistry, William Sue, Computer Science, Petra Deccans, Earth and Climate Sciences, Cheng Chen, Engineering, Jennifer Blecka, Geography and Environment, Matthias Beck, Mathematics, Ron Marski, Physics and Astronomy, and Jeff Cookston, Psychology. Thank you, faculty. Now I will introduce the students from the College of Science and Engineering that are eligible for high academic honors. In biochemistry, Eric Yip. In biology, Michelle Respler. In biology with a concentration in physiology, Alexandra Wynn. In biology with a concentration in zoology, Sydney Lau. In civil engineering, Yifeng Xu. Chao Yu Q. In computer science, Adolfo Van Zastro and Mayara Brandau Dusheko. In geography, Jeannie Rose and Emily Tam. In geology, Beth Holmes. In mathematics, Ash Abbott. And in mechanical engineering, Rachel Sterkel. For psychology, David Alexander Chang. Congratulations, students. The following students have been selected for special recognition as departmental honorees. Talia Hart, Clayton Thompson, Paul Klein, Yifeng Xu, Jeannie Rose, Ash Abbott, and Megan Tangonen. Congratulations.
I am very pleased to ask Talia Hart to stand again as the undergraduate hood recipient for the College of Science and Engineering. Ms. Hart is receiving her BS in biology. She wasn't sure she'd pursue a degree in the sciences when she came to SF State as a freshman. In fact, she started out as a major in communications because she really wasn't sure she wanted to spend all of her time inside of a laboratory. She was student body president at El Camino High School during her senior year. She had thought about pursuing science but felt she wasn't meant to be in a lab. She said, I am meant to be out talking to people and communicating, not really understanding then that science can also offer that. She took Biology 100, Human Biology, a class for non-science majors in her second semester, and that's when things really clicked for her. The Human Bio class was very relatable. You're learning about your own body and you're learning why it functions the way it does. The professor made it easy to grasp and simplified the science without dumbing it down and it captivated me more than anything else. That was when she started looking at what she could do with a BS in biology. She applied to the Maximizing Access to Research Careers program, known as MARC, which helps support underrepresented minority undergraduates in biomedical science and prepares them for PhD programs. While in the program, she was exposed to the work of the Society for Advancing of Chicano and Native Americans in Science, known as SACNIS. She became an active member and has worked to get other Latinos excited about science. Grade schools come to our labs and see that you don't have to look a certain way or come from a certain background to be good in science, she said. During her time at SF State, Talia examined the way embryonic cells use signals from neighboring tissues to develop into muscle cells at different times in development. This research is currently being prepared for publication. She plans to continue studying biology and specifically stem cells and developmental biology in a PhD program at a university some of you may have heard of. She hopes also to spread her love of science to her new community in Boston, where Harvard University is located and where she will study. Talia, we are honored and proud you chose to major in biology. We wish you endless success in all of your future pursuits. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to welcome Provost Summit back to the podium for her closing remarks. Thank you, Dean Bowman. As we prepare to close, I would like to pause to acknowledge our deans. Let's give each of our remarkable deans a round of applause for their tireless, inspiring, and outstanding support and service to our students, staff, and faculty at San Francisco State. Those are my heroes. Tonight we have seen what makes this such an extraordinary university. We are a public heritage university where individuals establish a higher education legacy for their families and generations to follow, and where our graduates' skills and talents in turn build a legacy of success for our state, the nation, and the world. Our students are as talented as, and as exciting a group as you will find anywhere, and their, their varied backgrounds, cultures, and experiences enhance our excellence. This honors convocation offers us an, an exceptional opportunity to make a large university a little smaller and a little more personal. We heard a rich array of individual stories tonight as our Hood recipients were introduced. If we had the same opportunity to learn about each student on this stage, we would be awed by the courage, intellectual breadth, and accomplishments and perseverance of every last one of them. This has been a proud evening of celebration and admiration for the outstanding achievements of our students. Let me ask you once again to applaud these soon-to-be graduates who have made this such an inspiring evening.
And now I'd like to ask our students to stand. All of those we're honoring tonight, please stand for a moment. I have a reason for asking them to stand, and that reason is you. We stand to applaud, to recognize, and thank you, the parents, friends, relatives, children, mentors, and teachers who have supported our students throughout this stage in their academic career. Thank you for the investment that has nurtured these scholars. As you've heard, many of our honors students would not have been successful without your steadfast support. Therefore, it seems only appropriate for all of us here on stage, our honors students, our faculty in the audience, to salute you, the families and friends who have guided and encouraged these students throughout the years. Will our honorees please join me in a round of applause? Please be seated. This evening's celebration does not end with this ceremony. Thanks to the University Women's Association, which sponsored our first honors convocation 39 years ago and has participated every year since, we are all invited to a reception in Jack Adams Hall at the Cesar Chavez Student Center. I look forward to seeing you all there. I now ask that our guests remain seated until our honors students and faculty have left the theater. Students are reminded to stop by Newth Hall to pick up their award certificates before going on to the reception. Our 2017 honors convocation has come to a close. As you, our honors graduates, are soon to leave us, know that you go with our love and our confidence Wherever the next step in your lives takes you, you will forever be one of ours, a San Francisco State alumni. It has been our pleasure to prepare you for what lies ahead.